Hello, it's good to be with you again as we look at the books of the Bible and what they're about. Now, here's a saying I've got for you. How the mighty have fallen. You know where that saying comes from? It comes from the Bible. In fact, it comes from 2 Samuel, the book we're looking at today. How the mighty have fallen. Shall we say that together, maybe with some actions to help us remember? How the mighty have fallen. Shall we do that again? How the mighty have fallen. That's what we see in 2 Samuel. See, it starts with the fall of a mighty king, King Saul. Remember him? He was tall, he was strong, he was impressive. But he turned away from God and he tried to kill David. Well, at the start of 2 Samuel, David hears that Saul is dead. He was killed in battle. How the mighty have fallen. And things are a bit messy after that for a while. But eventually David becomes king over all of Israel. He beats their enemies, he conquers a city called Jerusalem, and that's going to become the capital city. It's going to be where God lives with his people. Everything is going great, well hey! Do you think it stays great? Well it doesn't. Even David messes up. He's uh, chilling out on his roof one day. He should really be in battle against the enemies, but he's just hanging out on his roof and he looks and he sees a pretty woman who's already married. And he steals her from her husband. He even gets her husband killed by sending him out to the front of a battle and then abandoning him and leaving him to get killed. Oh dear, David. How the mighty have fallen. Now, have you ever done something really bad, or maybe just a little bit bad, and thought, oh, I've got away with it? Well, David thinks he's got away with that. But God knows. And God tells David he knows. And God is angry at David for what he's done. But David asks for forgiveness. He realises how bad he is. He realises he's done wrong. And he says, God, I'm so sorry. And God forgives him. But even though David is forgiven by God, his actions still have consequences. And things are never the same again. Things just start going wrong. So David's son, Absalom, tries to take over as king. David has to run away from him. Now eventually there's a battle and David's son Absalom gets killed. David gets to come back and be king again, but he's really, really sad. And then right at the end of 2 Samuel, David messes up again. He stops trusting God completely to look after him and the nation, and instead he trusts in the power of his armies. How the mighty have fallen. See, even King David, probably the best king ever, fails. How the mighty have fallen. And so, at the end of 2 Samuel, we're left hoping for a better king than David. A king who won't sin, a king who won't mess up, a king who doesn't need forgiveness because he always does what is right. And actually, that king is promised in 2 Samuel. Let me read what God says to David. He says, when your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, 
and I will establish the throne of his kingdom for ever. God promises a perfect king, a king who will be one of David's great, 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 great grandchildren, a king who will rule forever. And the Bible tells us, and Christians believe, that this king is Jesus. You see, when you read about Jesus, he always did what was right. He didn't need forgiving. He was perfect, but he died to forgive us, to forgive me, to forgive you. And actually Jesus rose from the dead to prove he's the king who will rule forever. He is this promised king. He is the mighty king who will never fall. And when we trust King Jesus, we join his kingdom forever. You know, I'm so glad Jesus is my king. It's great to follow him, to do what he says, and to be part of his kingdom forever.